Daniel chapter 3, verses 16. Actually, I'm going to read 3, 16 to 18. I'll give us time to get there. And if you would, keep your Bibles open as we explore this text. Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. It's recorded this way. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Focus on the first part of verse 18. They say, but even if he does not. So on this morning, I simply want to talk about even if he doesn't do it. Even if he doesn't do it. This is a powerful biblical story. Some are so familiar with this story that sometimes it seems like a fairy tale. Like it's not really real. Something like Cinderella or Rapunzel or Hansel and Gretel or the Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So familiar. We have sometimes a childhood perception of this story. Most people have heard it, even if they're not Christians. They've heard about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But I want to remind us that this story is history. It's just as real as anything that has ever happened in your life. We have to get so close to this story that we can feel the heat of the furnace. I want us to get so close to this story that, that we can smell the smoke. Because you see, King Nebuchadnezzar, he made an image of gold and he set it up in the province of Babylon. True story. He then, he summoned officials and he said that there has to be a dedication to the image. So they stood before the image. Then there was a herald that loudly proclaimed nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the, pa the pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever doesn't fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So as soon as they heard all of the sounds of the instruments, the lyre and, and, and all of these instruments, what did they do? The people of all nations, they fell down and they worshiped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But some, some of the Jews who were set over the affairs of the province in Babylon, some of them, in particular, these young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they neither served Nebuchadnezzar's gods or worshiped the image of gold that he set up. They said, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the Lord our God, he's able to deliver us from it. But even if he does not, we want you to know, King Nebuchadnezzar, your majesty, that we will not serve your God, even if God doesn't do it. Perhaps these young men realize that regardless God is still God. Their God is still God. God is able. You see, the nature of God doesn't change because of the mundane vicissitudes of life. God's nature does not change because of the circumstances that we find ourselves in. God's nature does not change because of trouble. I think I learned this most when I served as chaplain well, actually, this time it was in Raleigh. I was in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I served as chaplain talking about God still being God. 
There was a young lady who was rushed into the emergency department. As the chaplain at that particular hospital, you are to be in the emergency department every time there's a trauma. So every time you hear trauma alert, your pager goes off. And as God's representative, you have to go into that room. Or whether I say you get to go into that room because God trusts you to pastor people in that way. So you enter, I entered into this room and there was a young lady there and they were beating on her chest and she was covered in blood and they were, they were trying to revive her. When her family showed up, they said, Chaplain McCoy, the family is here. So then while they're trying their best to revive this young lady, I am to provide spiritual care. And so I go in with the family. I find that there is an African woman there. It's her daughter. She looks at me and she says, Chaplain, I want us to pray. I know that God is able to help my baby. I know that God is able to save my baby. So we stood there and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and time went on and I would go between the emergency department and, and the woman and she would just be talking about the goodness of God. God is so good, he's been so good and time passed, God has still been good. So time went by and the young lady died. But I'm talking about God is able. This woman taught me something because when her daughter died, I, I walked her down to the emergency department and she stood beside her dead child. And I heard her say, God, I don't know why you did what you did. I don't know why I don't have my baby, but I will still trust you. I will still praise you. I still worship you in her view God had not changed God is still love perhaps she really believed beloved let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God he that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love she didn't just know the scripture she lived the scripture she knew that God was able maybe these young men were saying no matter what no matter where I go I can't escape the rule of God King Nebuchadnezzar no matter no matter what happens I can't escape the love of God King Nebuchadnezzar no matter who's in office King Nebuchadnezzar the king of kings and the lord of lords i know who my god is god is able but even if he doesn't god is still god they wouldn't allow themselves to serve or worship it says to serve or worship any other gods you see when you really claim God you don't just worship God you serve God you don't just serve God you worship God you see it's twofold they said we're not going to do it King Nebuchadnezzar this this image erected it says that it was I read where it's 90 feet high it was 90 feet high and nine feet wide and every nation was to worship it, not just bow down, but worship it. It wasn't just about this type of respect towards the king, but it was an act of worship. They were, according to King Nebuchadnezzar, to be one nation under God. Whatever it is that's worshiped is our God. Even the very country that we live in, beautiful country, we are known as the land of prosperity. And then we many times say we're one nation under God. King Nebuchadnezzar said the same thing. What God are you talking about? Be careful. When they, us, whoever claim God, what God are you talking about? They knew that they were not going to worship that God. You see, it can sound like worship. It can look like worship. But, but they didn't. I mean, 2017 is doing a lot of things. Many times we find ourselves doing whatever is trending. 
Whatever's trending. Trending is about checking out the latest music, the latest videos, the latest comedy clips, or the latest fashion. Trendly. The problem with trends, though, is that they're not long-lived. I asked you to keep your Bible open. If you look at verse 29, after, after Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, after they were delivered from the fiery furnace, King Nebuchadnezzar is recorded as saying, I decree that the people of the nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of, of rubble. He says, no other God can save in this way. Now before this, he was saying, worship my God. But now he's telling the people, just see what their God can do so I'm sending out another decree you see when you serve the all wise God our God is not trendy our God does not have an expiration date I mean our God is the one the same God that Shadrach Meshach and Abednego knew our God is still a healer our God still delivers our God still sets free our God still blesses our God still saves. Our God still cares. That's our God. So our God will always be a hot topic. <laughs> King Nebuchadnezzar, I'm glad that my God is not trendy. By one verse you say this and by 29 you say something else. And so then believers have to be so careful. By Sunday morning, we say one thing. By Monday morning, we say something else. These young men knew that God was able, and they knew all of these things about God. They could not go into another land and not take God with them. They knew that their God would not change. They were charged with disregarding the king's authority, and they were charged with not serving the king's God and they were charged with not bowing down. It was guys, the image or the furnace. Guys, guys, bow down or burn. But they, they wouldn't change their stance. They had staying power. They, I mean, what about us, 2017? I mean, what if God doesn't do it? What if God doesn't do it in the way that you want? What if, what if God doesn't give you that job? What if, what if God doesn't give you that new vehicle? What if God doesn't give you that home? What if God doesn't give you that man? Or that woman? What, what, I mean, what, what if God doesn't give you more money? What if God allows a thorn to be in your flesh and stay there as Paul? What if, would we change even though God is unchanging? Would we still want Christ in our homes? Would there be another Missions Day Sunday if God didn't do it? Do you have a even if God doesn't do it spirit on you? I mean, we should still want to bless God. We should still want to praise God. And, and what's this talk about taking praise breaks? Taking a praise break. Is God a Kit Kat bar? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Is God a Kit Kat? I mean, I know people say, he's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. That does not mean that God is a Kit Kat bar. Talking about taking a break. Taking a praise break. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Even if he doesn't do it, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. No praise break. And I don't have to be emotional to praise God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all the things that he's done to me, yes, my soul does cry out hallelujah. I don't know what your soul does, but I do get excited. But I don't have to be emotional to praise the Lord. I praise the Lord because I have breath. 
doesn't say only when things go what I think is right. Only when God does what I want God to do in the way that I want God to do. Only when God is my genie in a bottle do I praise God and worship God and serve God. They said even if God doesn't deliver us from this fire, and many of us have been in fire before. Maybe not a literal fire, but some of us are here right now because we're going through the fire. But I've got good news for you. If you're going through it, then that means you're going to get to the other side. So keep on serving the Lord like you do. Keep on lifting the Lord up because you're going through the fire. So, so I could ask on this morning, won't he do it? And we'll say yes. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Yes. Won't he do it? Yes. But even if he doesn't do it, will you praise? Yes. Will you worship? Yes. Will you serve? Yes. Will you magnify? Yes. Will you lift? Yes. Will you be faithful? Yes. Will you do it? Yes. Even, if, even if God doesn't do it. God has already done something that none of us could ever do. Even though we were disobedient and we did not do it, we did not do the it, we did not, we weren't obedient. We didn't do it, but God still did it. What did he do? Oh, he sent Jesus. What did Jesus do? Jesus was flogged. He did it. What did Jesus do? Jesus was mocked. He did it. What did Jesus do? Jesus carried the cross to Calvary. He did it. What did Jesus do? They, they put nails in his hands. And they put nails in his feet. And they put a crown of thorns on his head. And Jesus, he did it. They even pierced him in the side. But Jesus didn't come down. He did not do that. Jesus did it. Even though we didn't do what we were supposed to do. He took a whipping. Jesus did it. Even though we didn't do what we were supposed to do. Jesus bled. Jesus did it. Even though we didn't do what we were supposed to do, Jesus cried, oh, good God Almighty. Even though we didn't do what we were supposed to do, Jesus still saves and is unchanging. So in all that we do, and in all of the things that we get for God, from God, and even the things that we don't get, I just wonder if we will hold to his hand. Will you do it? God's unchanging hand. Will you hold to his hand? God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things Unchanging hand. Oh, to 